Let me hit record. Yes, perfect. Ah, oh, here we go. Indeed. So you also barely made it this morning. I barely made it this morning. Um, I have actually, uh, one of my teachers is here visiting and, um, so we're like, let's do, let's do a little practice. And I'm like, okay, I only have this amount of time. Um, and I, I, I knew that I was getting close, even though it didn't seem like I was getting close. I knew I was getting close to time and, and then I popped off and I hadn't set up my lights or any of my stuff. So mm -hmm. I was, you know, the barely made it and then didn't get the, you know, to make the smoothie and, you know, all the, the stuff that I would have done before uh -huh. this talk. Which is interesting because we're talking about self-care today. It's perfect because we're talking about self-care today. <laughs> exactly. And so I also had a very um, disorganized in many ways sort of, sort of morning. And uh, my alarm didn't go off this morning because my phone died in the middle of the night, which was a, a grand surprise because there was definitely plenty of charge on it. It was, you know, almost fully charged. And for some reason it died. And um, I think it was like looking for a signal all night long, but regardless, anyway, I woke myself up around like kind of eight ten, and I was sort of like bleary of like, it's light out. Why am I not awake yet? Why, what's going on? And, um, and then, you know, rolled over and realized like, oh, okay, I need to be moving on. And, um, and I actually had a really fun dose of self-care practice this morning where I was like, okay, well, I don't have time to do my full deep practice that I necessarily would like to do. So I'm just going to put on whatever music I want and jump around like a fool for 20 minutes, which is uh, what I did this morning for my self-care practice. And it felt great. And I was so energized. and I was zipping around. But as, as a result of that, just like, you know, this big, big rush of energy from feeling so energized and expansive, I immediately started to do all of the things that I didn't actually have time to do. So that's why I barely made it this morning. Okay, that's so funny because we were both in that same space where, you know, I had gotten up and done some practice, but um, my my house guests were dealing with some things on the phone and business and stuff. And so by the time that they were ready to like come out and play with me, um, you know, I didn't have time to, uh, you know, really go go deep. And then, but once you start, you're there's a certain level of momentum that happens and you're like, Oh no, now that I've actually started this thing, I just want to stay in it. Yeah. That's, that's pretty much exactly what I found. And I, yeah, I work, I definitely worked up a sweat. This was like, you know, no messing around with the like, okay, light little movements. This was like me jumping around and like not screaming, but like fake screaming, you know, with the just moving the energy around. It was great. It felt really good, but definitely kind of carried me into the, okay, really high energy sort of morning. So um, personally, I would like to take a moment to drop back down into my body. I feel like I'm, I'm a little bit up here with just, ah, I've been going all morning. Can you tell? So uh, you're welcome to join me, all our viewers, if you like, to kind of drop into whatever space you would like to be present in for our, our call today as we talk about self-care. Yeah, um, especially as we talk about self-care and just breathing uh, down into the body and maybe just taking uh, a moment to feel the expression of love and gratitude that we have for our physical body. A lot of us are in the, that work in the realms of the mystic, sometimes we begrudge this physical form that we have and how messy and uncomfortable it is, but it's giving it a, a light, loving thank you and welcoming ourselves inside of our body form. Connecting it to the breath and grounding it down to the earth. Oh, goodness. I hope that's not me. Hello? Oh, there you are. Okay. There I am. There I am. 
<sighs> okay, so I got so grounded, I knocked the internet off of its tracks. <laughs> Okay. This too shall pass. This too shall pass. Up here. With, with our self-care for uh, healer types, empaths, what are some challenges that come up with that? What are some issues of worthiness? What are some of the obstacles that we create for ourselves, self-sabotage, for, uh, for making sure that we don't get the care that we need? This is something that I have been working on for years. This has been a lifelong practice for me of how do I make sure to take really impeccable care of myself. And then this is also something that I see coming up pretty much universally in my clients, in my students, in my peers who are, you know, peers and colleagues who are also empaths and healer types. So why is this such a universal thing for sensitive people? Yeah, so feel free to chat in or ask a question at any point in, in this conversation or to, um, you know, give us your reflection on what it is that comes up for you. Um, this has also been a huge part of my path. I know that when I first had my awakening, I, it was really intense. It was very, very dramatic. I guess has most things in my life seem to be, but it was really intense and dramatic. And I didn't have, um, I didn't have practices. I didn't, I didn't come from a place where I was doing practices and the practices created the awakening. Um, so I had that already that stability and that knowledge of practice. It was, I had this amazing, crazy awakening, all of this energy, the channeling, the, the, the practices started happening to me from the awakening, the, the yoga and the mudras and the, all of these pieces started happening out of the awakening. Um, and then it was so ungrounding and so hard to contain and work my channel, um, so hard to uh, be in public around other people and, and, and to deal with the energies that were coming in for me that I, I had to, um, I needed practice really badly. And I was lucky enough to find an amazing teacher who is actually here visiting me. Mm -hmm. I, I was lucky, lucky enough to find an amazing teacher who, uh, her name is Mayaya and she is, an incredible, incredible wisdom keeper of teaching dance movement meditation uh, practices and mm -hmm. with a lot of focus on really grounding and grounding into the body and clearing and um, being able to handle huge amounts of energy through the system, through practice, um, and to make it so it's sustainable. And that definitely saved my life. Without a doubt, without a doubt, save me, save my kidneys from, from burning out, save my adrenals, save my, um, you know, my mind, where I thought I was just kind of going crazy, save me. Mm -hmm. And um, totally unexpectedly, because I'm such like scattershot all over the place, like, let's try all these do different things and not, not make any plans and, and all of these pieces. But for my path, learning practices was vital importance and it's been one of my biggest challenges i teach practice which they always say to teach what you most need to know and somehow i uh, ended up you know teaching making a, a large portion of my work is about teaching practice because mm -hmm. what i see is that it doesn't matter how amazing of a healer you are. It doesn't matter how good your like skills for working with other beings or energies or whatever those things are. If you don't have a solid rooted grounded nature and practice, and you're able to really tune into your own system in a really, in a really, really good way and, and nurture yourself constantly, 
you will burn out, you'll, you'll mess up your energetic system. I've seen it with really powerful practitioners. Yeah, it's not sustainable, ultimately, is, is what happens with that. And, you know, Kat, I think you brought up a really important point is like, when um, I love that you spoke to this, the aspect of how does the awakening appear to you? And is it through the practices that the awakening takes place? Or is uh, does the practice come as a function of channeling your awakened sensitivity? And, you know, so for you, I know that you, you kind of woke up and then, you know, learned the practices in order to contain it and well, not contain, but in order to channel it. Yeah. And uh, for me, I feel like, um, I think mine was pretty similar in that. I mean, I, I definitely had a little bit more of a gentle awakening than I think most people do since I never really shut down. I never shut down my, my intuition, my healing abilities, my sensitivity, but I, but I was, I was wide open for years as a very sensitive kid growing up. And I look now at some of the intuitive practices that I was holding in place for myself in order to feel safer and more grounded. I was so drawn to animals. I would much like that was one of my self-care mechanisms as a kid was I don't really want to talk to people. I want to go hang out with animals. And it's actually like this had never occurred to me before this very moment, actually, that that was a self-care mechanism. I thought, oh, I just like animals way better. But really, in reality, if you're a wide open, sensitive little being, as I was being around energetically grounded, safe authentic presence is going to feel much better to your system as it did to mine than being around people who all, you know, their energies are all over the place. Humans have agendas and lies and inauthenticity, right? And so, you know, for us sensitive people, we like consistency. We like honesty. We like uh, immediacy and animals are champions at that. So that was always one of my self-care mechanisms as a kid. And then, uh, growing into my awakening and really, you know, consciously realizing what was going on, I, I did actively pursue, uh, pursue some shamanic studies, even though that's not what I would knew that I was doing at the time, but it just, it called to me, it was interesting to me, but I started building my practice at a very young age, just completely out of what I felt inspired to do. And um, you know, and I know there are many people who have their awakening experiences from doing yoga for 20 years or for whatever, and uh, or doing their um, sitting in meditation or doing vipassana, and then they experience their awakening as a result of the practice. And um, how do you think that affects people's ability to to be really impeccable in their self care? If it you you see what I mean of like if it's coming out of kind of the necessity for it, if it's coming out of like the awakening and the sensitivity comes from the practice. Well, I think that when people have these uh, these kind of rude awakenings, um, they don't have the structure in place. It can be, I, I've seen people so deeply struggle with that aspect where mm -hmm. it's, it's just like, oh my God, I can't handle all of this. I can't handle this energy and information that's coming in and, and, not to have had the experience of learning how to develop and maintain a personal practice. It's, it seems to be very challenging. I know it's, it's been a challenge for me over the years. And, um, so the best thing you can do is like, let's develop a personal practice and whatever comes out of that. Amazing. But I also can say that for those of us who have this natural awakening, we have sort of this like lineage that's living inside of us. It is, it is who we are on a really deep level that having um, access to that without it almost like being trained out of us in a certain kind of way is also for some people that's important. That's mm -hmm. their, their path is exactly as it should be. It should actually um, create that way. Yeah. That's what? interesting that you mentioned that. I mean, my mind immediately jumps to um, our mutual friend flute player who, uh, you know, and perhaps you'd like to share, you're a little more familiar with that story. Well, you know, I, I have a dear friend, a dear friend, Eric, um, Eric Vaughn, and he is an amazing flute player. He, 
is the master, master beyond master of food fighting. And at different points in our relationship, he has, you know, stated this, this warning almost around, you know, before I went and studied, you know, a Japanese classical flute, I could improvise with like I could just tune into the ethers and improvise these amazing songs and they would just flow through me and I was just channeling the song and um and and that being trained pulled some of that away because it's so hard not to do the thing you've been trained to do when it's really been trained into your system. And so you can lose some of your natural channel, the natural thing that's coming through you. Mm -hmm. So I think that that's always something that we should, we should be conscious of and aware of. It's amazing to study these lineages and to get really deep into a practice and to also hold space for our own unique gift and way yeah. of connecting with energy. Yeah. And I think it's, it's particularly relevant, um, you know, for the modalities in which we practice in which our gift comes through, but also for the self care, you know, people don't necessarily think of intuitive self care. Um, you know, so that's one of the things that I teach really significantly with my students. I emphasize this heavily in all of my classes is, okay, I'm teaching you a way to do this. This is not the way to do this. I mean, unless there's kind of a safety, um, you know, a safety concern or, um, you know, sort of a specific procedural thing as there are with a couple of these practices. But for the most part, it's say, okay, here are all these tools for you to with this medicine. Okay, what does this mean for you? How does this aspect manifest in your practice and um and so that's a really rich part of what i like to instill in my students and my clients and yet there's another layer to that of the self-care because we have collectively as as a modern american society we have put ourselves in a situation where other people tell us how to take care of ourselves all the time people are used to going to see a doctor people are used to um, it, you know, their, their parents teaching them how to take care of themselves, right? Like, you know, so, oh, your mom tells you to have this kind of soup when what you're not feeling well or whatever the deal is. It's like, we, we learn our, our self-care practices from other people for the most part. What, you know, you, I'm sure you've seen some of this too. And yet learning body awareness, learning energy awareness, learning comfort and sensitivity in our own personal sphere is a huge part of what enables us to practice our intuitive self-care that is authentic to our needs in the moment. And also, you know, how do we avoid the, oh, well, this is a way that I can take care of myself. And then we just fall into that rut and, don't, and you know, we are a dynamic organism or a dynamic energy body whose needs constantly change. So then rather than and falling into a rut of practice. It's like if you go to the gym and do bicep curls every day, like the rest of your body is going to atrophy, right? So the same comes into play with other, other energetic practices, other physical practices. Nutritional self-care is addressing the constantly changing needs of your amazing, unique form. And that comes with intuition and awareness, being able to be present and actually know what you need in the moment. Yeah, it's super crackly. I hope I'm not so crackly. Am I crackly? You're crackly. Um, You're crackly too. Oh, crap. <laughs> uh, better. Yeah, I well, so, and I think you're, you're right on there. And when I teach my students, you know, I have a very specific, like there is, there is a lot of stuff that's very specific and it's like, this comes before this and this comes before this and this comes before this. And this is how this works. This is why this works the way that it does. This is the mantras that are connected to it. These are the colors. These are the sounds. These are the, this, all of this stuff. It's structure. There's structure there. Yeah. But the goal of, of create, of learning the structure, I think is to then let go 
and release into it and to know that if you have done something enough times, like your body knows it, your energy system knows it and that it it's can self-regulate it. You, there's so much wisdom inside of our system that if we just kind of have, have our own conversation happening with ourselves, we're going to get a lot out of it. And so in my work around self-care and practice, there's a, like, okay, here's this system. This is very powerful, very effective system. Learn the system. At the end of the day, take that system and let it guide you to, to move in and out of it and to flow with it and to play with it, to, to let self-care be play to not be everything is so serious everything is so like regimented and and if we can allow pieces of our self-care like to just be joyful and yeah. and and in the moment like in the not every single day are you going to need to like whack yourself and and vomit up energy and like cry and hopefully you might <laughs> you need to do this every day for a while but and some days you need to laugh and some days you need to just lay on the earth. And some days, you know, you just need to do yoga or you just need to breathe or you just need to meditate. Mm -hmm. And I've seen so many people who've come in, uh, especially kind of older people, um, will often, well, I had this practice that I've been doing this many sun salutations and I've done it every single day for the past 12 years. And for yeah. some reason, I feel like my energy stale. And it's like, well, yeah. <laughs> yeah, definitely. It's, it's so interesting how we adopt these ideas of, um, you know, a practitioner or a teacher tells someone something. I've had this happen with people that I work on. I remember I did a chakra balance for a friend of mine years ago. And I saw him again, you know, quite a while later because he was traveling around and out of the country for a while. I saw him like a year later and he's, and I remember in our initial chakra balance, I told him that he needed to work on his root chakra and I gave him some homework for working on his root chakra. And I told, and you know, this was in the context of that one chakra balance. He told me that ever since then, he's like, yeah, I, I know you said my root chakra is off and I've really been working on it. And, um, it, yeah, it's. Uh, you know, but basically he was working on the assumption that his root chakra hadn't changed at all from something that I had told him. And so I, I had to spell it out for him. I said, no, no, no. When I told you that, that was like right now in this moment. And that is by no means a, an overall assessment of your condition. So I think that's, you know, that's another important part of our self-care, recognizing like the need for change and dynamic fluctuation of our energies and of our bodies. Our bodies are constantly changing. You know, even it's not necessarily visible to us, but our body chemistry and our, you know, as we're changing with the seasons and moving into different biorhythms, your needs for sleep are going to change. Your needs for different minerals are going to change. Needs for different kind of light. Everything yeah. is is in constant fluctuation. I think that's and, really important. The piece around the seasons, because yeah. so many people, I know, especially being in, you're in Portland, and when I was there in Portland, that people do not account for the fact that we are animals, and that yeah. in the winter they're like, I don't know why I'm, I'm, I just don't have as much energy, you know, as I maybe did a few months ago. And I was like, well, you know, it's yeah. the middle of winter, it's raining, it's dark have a rest. Like you're okay. You're, you're going to be fine. Um, <laughs> giving, give, here's this other thing though, that I think you're touching upon is, you know, giving ourselves permission to rest. That's a, that's a huge one, right? You know, especially when, you know, if people are in more traditional employment, like I'm, I'm really fortunate. You're really fortunate in the respect that we can take a rest today if we need to. Um, and you know, I do, I work, I, schedule my work differently in the summer than I do in the winter. I take fewer appointments in the winter because I understand my energetic capacity and, and the hours that I am okay to work in yeah. are shorter. And then in the summer, I can take appointments. I can take evening appointments and still have enough fuel to be okay. Yeah. I had someone with a, I think a 5.30 today. And when I saw that, I was like, it's going to be dark already. Um, which I wouldn't think in the summer, I'd be like, whatever, it's like 30. Uh, mm -hmm. So 
Absolutely. And I think one of the pieces on self-care is permission. Yeah. Yeah, permission. And then, um, so there were a few points that we highlighted in uh, in our self-care for empaths, you know, one of which is the challenges. I feel like we've We've talked a lot about what are the challenges or some of the challenges for um, for self care, uh, and then you know the it's interesting to me why sensitive people in particular, why nurturing, compassionate, healer, empath type people have greater challenges taking care of themselves than other types of people. Would you agree, or are we just more aware of it? It, it seems to be so. It seems to be that there is this, and if, I'm not sure if it's an internal or if it's a, just a learned piece around self-care, taking care of yourself, being selfish and yeah. lazy. Mm -hmm. And I think in some ways that people who are really sensitive and healers and, and so on and so forth, that there is this piece around value because often who we are in the world, like that's for a lot of people who there's a lot of people who are healers and empaths and who they are in the world is what that's it. That's their thing. Like that's the gift. That's, that's their gift to the world. And that is really hard to put value on, especially yeah. in Western society. We don't see, oh, you're just being you and you let people talk to you and you hold space for them, whatever that means. Like, right. well, that's valuable. Yeah. Um, because it's not tangible object. It's not like... It's some, not quantifiable. It's not quantifiable. Exactly. So, like, okay, what is the dollar amount? What is the, like, number that you can put yeah. on that? Right. I think that we're oftentimes trying to work harder than other people to try to, you know, have that, that value component to who we are. Yeah. Um, and it's not, it's not easy to like, look at yourself and go, okay, this is what I do. I just kind of, you know, I'm with people and, yeah. um, you know, to see that is so valuable. And then also, you know, in, as we're raised, we're raised, you know, if you're laying on the couch or doing nothing, basically meditating, um, yeah. as a child, if a child is just sitting around and doing nothing, it's like, what are you doing? You're being lazy. Right. Um, you know, you're not out actively pursuing something that's going to make you a better person. Yeah. You're just, and we actively steer people's attention away from themselves. Yeah. That's another thing is I think, um, and I remember this from when I was going to school, uh, and you know, like particularly middle school, high school at this one school that I went to, there was such a significant emphasis on service, like on community service and, and being aware of others. And that's great. You know, I definitely had some community interactions and, um, and perspectives that I would have been otherwise, but I remember something came up about um, I don't remember exactly what the context was, but I said something to the um, to the effect of like, oh, but shouldn't we, you know, also be or like a meeting with the head of the school or something? And she looked at me like I was crazy, you know, because again, the the focus was on no, we teach our students to be considerate of others, like we're creating a globally aware situation and even then it didn't make sense to me it, it didn't and I think I'm trying to remember exactly what the context was I think it had something to do with the movie the secret like had just come out or something and I was aware of the secret that was teaching you about like your your internal awareness and um and the the head of the school wanted nothing to do with it she's like no we teach our students to be aware of others right. and so Right. So we're, and especially like you were talking about where you have a kid sitting around who looks like they're doing nothing. Oh, well, that's not productive. Go like, you know, go play a game or go do your homework or go do something that it is outside of yourself. Mm -hmm. yeah, and viewers and, and empaths, like, I think all people, we, we need, mm -hmm. we need to learn how to be self-aware. 
Yeah. Because most of us are so busy feeling what other people are feeling and mistaking it for our own feeling. Yeah. Trying to please others and trying to fit into someone else's thing. Um, that what we really need is how to just take care of ourselves, how to just be aware of who we are, what we are, what we feel, so that then we can go, oh, that's not me. That doesn't have anything to do with me. That's someone else's energy. Right. Yeah. I know as a Yeah, that's a distinction. That's super important. Because, and that is... Yeah, it's super important, and it's not what we're being taught at all. Um, as a child, I spent so much right. time alone. I was just in my room, just like doing nothing, drawing, and like, I don't even know what I was doing. I was, you know, I was really alone a lot. Yeah. And, um, and if I don't have a lot of alone time where I'm actually not doing much, where I'm, you know, maybe drawing or, or singing or, I don't know, organizing little altar places and like, you know, building dioramas in my house, which is totally useless information for the world that, useless, quote unquote useless. right? Yeah. That, that, which, which I've always been yeah. as a child, I was really obsessed with organizing figurines and things and little animals and stuff on shelves and stuff. Um, I spent a ton of time doing that and I was like, Oh, I was, I was making altars. I just didn't know what I was uh, using Smurfs and uh, <laughs> you, you were know. creating sacred space. You were <laughs> organizing energy and moving energy in your in your home, right? Um, there's this one. There's a program, and I know there are a variety of programs all over the country. Uh, a friend of mine teaches at a high school. It's called Peace in Schools. And this is something that I try and do when I go in and I'm an occasional substitute high school and middle school teacher because uh, I like hanging out in kid energy every once in a while. It's fun to go in and like, you know, ask the questions to trigger the debates and the philosophy and, you know, speak Spanish with the kids. It's fun. But I always try and start my classes if, if there is time permitting with a little mini meditation and some yoga. And uh, it's met with mixed results. Some of the students are totally into it and some are, are not. But more and more recently, when I've introduced the idea of, uh, especially to the high schoolers, like the older high schoolers, I tell them, you are asked all day to pay attention. But what does that even mean? Like you're asked all day to pay attention to the teacher, pay attention to your work, pay attention to your classmates, pay attention to your books, pay attention to this presentation we're watching. But all day long, you don't actually spend any time paying attention to yourself. So right now, I'm going to turn down the lights, and you can just spend a moment putting your hands on you, put, you know, give yourself a hug, and pay close your eyes, pay attention to what's going on inside you right now. And when I, when I phrase it that way, they love it. They eat it up, and they're just like, oh my gosh, that felt so good. I actually just got to like be still for a moment. I had this one, um, one boy tell me like a senior in high school is like, I, this is the only time today I've had to be still all day. And, and that is amazing. So we're talking about self-care, but really ultimately the root of self-care, I think comes down to, to awareness. That's what we've been you know talking about here for half an hour is like, what is the awareness of yourself? What is the awareness of your energy? Right. And you know, a lot of times we think it's, it's, I've, well, I've, we, we bring our, our, this same sort of system into our care, right? We're like, well, I got to go to this yoga class or I got to go and do this thing. I, I got to go and meditate for this many minutes and I got to do this and I got to do that. And, right. and instead of that cultivation of awareness, sometimes my best uh, practice is, is I don't really, I, like, I don't have time. I get in the shower and I just feel, and I feel everything, and I sing. And by the time I get out of the shower, I'm like, oh my gosh, I'm, I, I have like called in all my, my angels, like everybody's vibrating. It's, it's just, it, everything feels really good. And I can go on yeah. and sing. And, and that was your self-care practice. That was my self-care practice. Right. Yeah. You mm -hmm. know, and we also have to start to look at and form 
our self-care practice to, you know, where we are, especially when we're, when we're doing, when we're having intense awakenings or we're doing a lot of healing work. Um, you know, I know that, you know, when I was going through my awakening, I would spend hours and hours in this state of like vibrating and channeling and blah, 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 all of this craziness. And the self, that wasn't actually that much self-care because it was kind of exhausting and overwhelming and it was bringing up so much stuff. And so the self-care was really just like going and being in the tub with all the Epsom salt in the dark for like two hours and like re, re nurturing my system with, you know, with, with the, this like water and You're crackling up super that I know you've been crackling too. I'm not sure why our, our um, system is so bad today. Yeah. It's I'm switching over. Okay. I'm switching over to mm -hmm. a different, a different reality here. Okay. Everything is off on my end that can be. So yeah, okay. everything's off, but I'm going to. Okay. Um, well, while, while you're doing that, I want to bring our attention to the idea of, of worthiness and self-sabotage, because this is something um, I've noticed. I am really good at my self-care when I'm already feeling good. You know, it's kind of fun that works is like at times where maybe I, I'm a little bit less meeting of myself, but I feel foods and do do the activities that feel really good in my body and then it's the times when I feel the most depleted most Hmm. out of my comfort zone or, you know, like just distraught. That's when I drop off the cell. But still, it was very destabilizing for me. And my root chakra was shot to shit, basically. And the after I got notice on my place for about five days, I didn't eat or shower, basically. It was real bad. It was so bad. I, I admit that in public so. I, I admit this with like full love for myself of like oh my gosh that was terrible um and and i uh was sitting in front of the computer basically in my bathrobe for five days obsessively looking at craigslist trying to find a new place to live and um and my roommate at the time you know who is a, a dear friend of mine you know she knows me so well and at this point we've lived together for more than a year and she's looking at me and she says michelle why are you punishing yourself and, and as soon as she said that, I realized, holy crap, that's exactly what I'm doing is I am punishing myself by not taking care of myself because I feel unworthy because I lost my house, like through no fault of mine. It was a no cause eviction. It's just Portland housing the way it is. My landlord decided, oh, I can move back in and remodel and, um, and, and charge way more rent. And we're getting a comment, um, here saying, Ugh, I got kicked out of my place in Portland this summer too and had a similar root chakra issues, right? It's incredibly destabilizing. And, and so, you know, for her to point that out to me of like, okay, you're punishing yourself. And then I realized, holy crap, you're right. Okay. For one, you know, I took a day on, I think it was like the sixth day where I shut down my computer. I didn't get on my computer at all. I didn't look at Craigslist. I took a bath. I made myself amazing food and I did exactly what you were talking about like in the bath for hours and just be in the darkness be in the yin because i needed to reset my system it, it was it was really bad but it was coming down to worthiness of like i felt unworthy because i lost my house like it, it wasn't any fault of mine but there was what did i do wrong to lose my house oh i wasn't manifesting well enough oh i wasn't doing my my spells properly especially for a master manifestor like myself um, you know, taking it as personal responsibility of I made this happen. 
so I have to fix it and I can't take care of myself. I don't deserve to actually eat properly or shower until I find a new place to live. Yeah. 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 <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Yeah, and I, I think maybe face while I was telling that story, I'm just like, oh God, I know. It's, yeah. Yeah, and I think that we're we all have that in one way or another. Um, where when we're doing really good and things are going well, we're like, okay, I can, you know, we're doing our practices and we're meditating and we're eating good and everything's great, and then something goes wrong and you know, a relationship ends or a, you know, a job, you know, something goes, goes wrong in a job or whatever the thing is, someone in the family passes or there's something happens that destabilizes us. And we, I think we get triggered into our, you know, those, those deeper parts of ourselves that don't feel, um, that don't feel worthy of receiving what we're happily easily able to give to other people yeah i was on a call with a student uh, a couple of nights ago and she'd been dealing with some stuff around immunity and being sick a lot recently and um had made some uh in in the course of the healers process had realized that uh, some of these these issues in her body and this immunity stuff that would happen throughout her whole life was coming down to when she would start to do her practices and start to feel power and powerful inside of her body, she would shut herself down with with illness because she had learned from her family that you know women aren't powerful and they're subservient and you know they need to be in a certain kind of you know, a certain kind of vibration, a certain kind of, of way of being in the world. And then if you're really powerful, you're not going to be loved and accepted. Right. So just automatically taking steps to make sure you stay in that lowered vibration to fulfill the expectation of your subconscious belief. Right. I hope everybody got that. It was super tacky, but that was really important. Really, yeah, really important. I, I could understand what you were saying, even though it was super correctly. This is horrible. We might have to revisit this whole topic again for some reason with the crackly internet. I'm so sorry, you guys. I'm not sure why it's so crackly. Yeah. Um, okay. I think we'll have to revisit the t this topic again anyway because it is so important. And ultimately, like, again, we are dynamic beings and continually evolving through different self-care practices. So um, something I'm really excited about right now, actually, is I just started working with a friend of mine who's a nutritional therapist. And, and that's a, uh, well, first of all, I'd like to say me actually seeing another practitioner is a really big deal. I know. Yeah. You're, you're nodding like, yep. Okay. For you too. I know, I know. Um, but this is a big deal to actually seek out care from another expert in the field. And, uh, you know, because again, like I, I'm a relatively well-qualified healer. I, I consider myself to be relatively well-qualified, you know, doesn't mean I'm an expert in everything by any means, but um, as far as nutrition goes, I know more than the average person, I think, between my, you know, my biology degree and health classes that I've taken and also my understanding of supplements, herbal medicine, and food. But again, there are people who are trained experts in this field. I am, I started working with a nutritional therapist and our very first appointment, of course, you know, she's, you know, doing like testing my liver and my gallbladder and my spleen and, you know, my organ systems for different levels of inflammation and um, gut health and everything, which there's no way that I know how to do all of that to the level of expertise that she is. So I am giving myself a huge hug and a pat on the back right now for actually going to see another practitioner to help take care of myself. And were you totally on time for your last appointment? No. <laughs> <laughs> right. Okay. So I ended this way because, um, okay. yeah. Yeah. So, so I told you this story already, Kat, but I will thank you for bringing that up. <laughs> um, so this, my appointment, this was my very first appointment with her. 
I was, um, I had not quite budgeted enough time between my session, my last uh, session that I was doing on somebody and then leaving the house to go to this appointment. Or I had budgeted exactly enough time if I didn't do other stuff in between. But of course, I did other stuff in between because I had emails from clients and I had to upload this session file and I had to make a call and like, you know, I was prioritizing my clients. I was prioritizing other people. So then by the time I walk out the door, it's like getting a little bit more into traffic time. Um, and I was, I was talking to my mom at the time too. And I told her like, oh yeah, I'm you know running out the door for this appointment and I'm running late. And she says, oh, who's your client who you're going to go see? And I said, no, I'm the client here, but it, you know, Hey, at least it's better me being late for myself than me being late for a client, which I never am by the way, for like my actual like professional appointments. I'm, I'm always on time. And she, she kind of pauses and she says to me, she says, is it really better? And she totally called me out on it. No, it's not better. I, I realized I was like, no, you're actually totally right. It's not better for me to, again, I was prioritizing the needs of all my other clients that could have waited a couple of hours. And I made myself late to my first nutritional therapy session with this new person. And, you know, she's a friend of mine. She was very understanding. And fortunately, I didn't impact her schedule much. But still, it was like, you know, definitely recognizing, wow, putting myself way down on the on the totem pole there for in terms of priority. Yeah. Self-sabotage. What? Yeah, yeah. Self, yeah, self-sabotage. And so within that, when we see those pieces where we're self-sabotaging ourselves, I think that is so important to look at. And I've definitely been there too, where I've been like, yeah, I'm late for the thing, but it's, you know, for me, it's not like it's for, you know, someone who's important, <laughs> like anyone but me. Um, and I think that it, when we hit that, when, when we get to that place, that's, that's where we really have to look, right? We have to look at like, what, why am I sabotaging myself? Is it because I don't want to be powerful or I don't want to be successful or I don't want to be seen as selfish or I, you know, what are the stories underneath it that usually are from our childhood, from something maybe somebody said, you know, about us as you know as a kid whether it was we were lazy or we were self my mom says i'm selfish sorry mom i know that you're probably going to listen to this and be really mad at me she hates when i talk about her as though she's not amazing she's amazing but um you know there's been times when she's like you're selfish but she's just joking she's like it's you know it's cute how selfish you are uh <laughs> you know because in in a lot of ways i am and um, it was reflected to me, you know, selfish, whatever that means. I'm self-centered. We're all self-centered. So um, I give a lot. And I was, I had it reflected to me yesterday. I was um, doing a session with a client of my men's work program had come to town with uh, Charmaine. Charmaine was here. Charmaine Hayworth is my partner in the men's work. And um, we did this three-hour session he went into this other realm that he's never been in before. He left, he could hardly move because he was like, my body, his body can be completely like rearranged. And, you know, he's like, wow. I've been someplace I've never been before. And, you know, he's, he's felt the yum. Here it is. Mm -hmm. And the yum. <laughs> he's felt the yum. And so at the end of the session, she was like, you know, we, we work a lot um, with our clients on, you know, online and, and things like that. And she was like, you know, as you were in, we were in the middle of that session and you were doing your thing, right? We were doing soul, I'm doing soul retrieval and I'm singing and doing all the stuff that I do to sound with someone. And wait, say, say that again. You're crackling out. Couldn't understand. Oh, just that I was saying, you know, I'm singing. We're, we're doing some soul retrieval work. We're reorganizing his energy system. And she said, you know, in the middle of that, as I was watching you, what came up was how much you have to take, like what it actually takes to be able to do that with someone, like what it actually takes someone to be able to hold that kind of space, 
you know, to be, to do a three hour session, to yeah. take some place, someone they've never been before to, you know, reorganize their system in that kind of way to work with the amount of energy and, and beings that are coming through, um, through my body and, and into the space. Um, she's like, what it actually takes for someone to do that is you need a lot of sleep. And you need yeah. to live in a place that feels nurturing. You need to feel mm -hmm. grounded and you need to eat properly and you need to do your practices and you need to be quiet and you need to meditate. Yeah. And like, and those are all things that you do. I know you sleep a lot. You sleep deeply for a very long period of time and you <laughs> are on it with the, the amazing foods and the smoothies and the nuts and the, like, you know, the good calories and powders and all the different things. Right. Yeah. And biohacking. Yeah, yeah biohacking. And, right. listen, and that's what it takes. It's not the same as someone who gets up and not that that's any less than and goes to a job and comes home and watches TV and goes to bed. Like yeah. all of those people really need self care too. Yes. But for us to show up in the fullness of who we are, we have to be devoted into ourselves in a new way. Yeah. Okay. This is, I'm really glad you're bringing this up um, because this is actually kind of what prompted my, um, my journeying into the nutritional therapy stuff is um, over the last, I would say probably over the last six months, um, like starting kind of in May, my, my work and my, um, the way that I'm doing my work, my offerings in the world, my practices have been up leveling, up leveling like ridiculously. And I know you've witnessed some of that and my work was great before. It's even more awesome now. And yes. I know that I can say that really confidently of like, I am rock starring this like nobody's business. And I've noticed a like different physical sensation for me and my body feels really different as I'm increasing farther and farther the energy that I'm running and I keep up leveling and even better and better and even like my sacral chakra is a galaxy now by the way um it's it just in terms of this like creative life force pouring out of me my body is I feel like my body can't keep up with this and so I've been looking into, okay, how can I, you know, go even deeper into like getting my body up to speed with this massive energy that I'm running. And I know that, um, you know, we, we have some people on here, um, some of whom I know are in this path already. Some, some of you, I don't know, but I imagine, you know, you're, you're aware you're stepping into this. Maybe you found this to be the case as well. When you're experiencing these big energetic shifts, that's when your body requires more input of energy to be up to speed with your new frequency. Yeah. Food, yeah. nutrition. Oh my God. And, and it's right. so funny that self-care, when we're talking about self-care, it's like, yes, it's, you know, it's practice and it's yoga and it's breathing. It's all these things, but God, it's food and sleeping and sunshine and nature. Like it, it's so simple. And right. <laughs> Right. Yeah, exactly. Like food, you know, so that this is where um, I'm really excited to be working with this person on um, like literally building from the ground up, rebuilding my cellular structure to be more in alignment with this new frequency that I'm running. Because energetically, I feel awesome right now. I feel great. I am like running everything super high. My work is super charged. You've been on the receiving end of some of that work. And, and I mean, from conversations, you know, and I know I'm just like, boom, owning it. I need my body to be up to speed. So yes. I'm, I'm really stepping into the like, okay, how can I biohack myself? You know, not in, not in any detrimental way. I'm not like getting high on superfoods. Right. But it's like, um, there are people who do that too. Um, speaking of, of um, well, we weren't really speaking of that. I just think it's funny, but yeah, um, you know what I'm talking about though? Like so speaking of practices, like people having awakenings from practices or people who are loading up on the superfoods in order to feel more, more connected to spirit. Right. right. Um, okay. And we can, we can always go overboard on everything, but, but I hear you. And I feel like in my work as well, <laughs> Uh, I was just saying that I really hear you and I feel like in my work as well, especially recently there has been this yeah. 
up level in the energetics that's coming through for people. People are, you know, they're receiving a lot of energy. And, um, you know, yeah, I have, I mean, I, I'm on the food and the supplementation and the, the superfoods and, and all of that too. Like, um, I had let myself kind of go off of that for a little while and then, you know, really saw that to, you know, to, to, to be who I am in the world, I've got to be more devoted to that part of my life. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. Well, that's, um, I want to go ahead and invite if anyone has any comments or questions, they want to chime in. Now's a good time. And as we'll be wrapping up. Um, yeah. So the, again, that self care for empaths, what are our takeaway messages here? I feel like we, we talked a lot about the awareness being a really important component of your self care is like, that's, that's the foundation of everything is like, be aware of what you need your body, your emotional needs, your energetic needs. Like that, that is the first step. And own that shit. Like own it. Like own. You know what? I need 10 hours of sleep at night if that's what you need. Just own it. Just be like, you know what? You don't, you don't need to make me feel bad because I need to sleep right now. Or yeah. own the fact that you need to eat a certain amount of food in a day and that's what you need. Like own the fact that you need to spend time alone, you know, in nature. Own the fact that whatever yeah. it is that is is your vital need is important yeah. and it is what you need to do and it's okay in yeah. oh you're reminding me of one thing that kind of relates to something that we talked about last week with the um what can, why can't healers have a normal life um i know you and i have both experienced this of like i need to not go to this party that's right or i need to not go out and be among people you know right. where I, where we call each other and go, is it okay if I don't actually go to this thing? Yeah. Right. And then we say, yes, yes, it's fine. I'm in the same boat. I'm staying home tonight. Have a good one. Yeah. <laughs> and, um, but for whatever reason, it's like, um, you know, I need, and, and I've been in this position where I have wanted to want to go to whatever party and see all my friends. And it's not like it's, you know, like a crazy, horrible, like a really awful, I, I don't go to awful parties. I only go to great parties, but, um, you know, there's, there is that need too of, I need to be quiet. I need to go to bed at eight 30, right? I need to, I need to have my, my tea, my herbal tea, and then sit with my book and, and read my amazing book and then turn off my light and meditate for an hour. Right. Yeah. So, so owning that is really important to your your needs whatever is vital for you and your life force energy this is like this is your life force we're talking about and this is something that one of the biggest hurdles i know i have confronted is exactly what you were saying pat is owning your needs and saying no this i know my energy i'm aware enough of my energy now i know that like by me fulfilling whatever other expectation or me going to this event or me putting energy out like that ultimately knocks me back down to here and i need to be up here yeah. you know and, and personally like i can't afford to be operating at half speed and the world you know so I, i'm speaking to you all viewers right now the world needs you to be operating at full potential the world needs you to be operating at 100%, 111%, right? So please own your needs. Own your needs, yeah. yeah. So I, I love this. We just got a comment that says, I love this talk. I've been coddle, calling it coddling myself and I'm repurposing the word. Yes. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, I think another takeaway that we want to reinforce is uh, evolution, shift, change, um, inspiration. Uh, that the same thing is not going to keep working, especially right now we're shifting and changing and upgrading so quickly that um, allowing ourselves to explore something new and to integrate something new, to try something new, to allow ourselves freedom within our practice, even if our practice feels kind of like this is my practice, allowing ourselves some freedom inside of the practice to explore and explore yeah. and play. I think that's a, I think that's a big takeaway piece from, from this conversation. Definitely. Yeah. Shifting with your own, your own vibration as that continues to evolve too. That's super important. Yeah. And not getting stagnant. 
Yeah. And always being willing to say no, I think is another piece, right? Is, uh, you know, when, when I, I remember having a conversation with a dear friend who'd been in, in the shamanic very long time, very, very long time. And he said, you know, the, the first thing that my teacher taught me is today may not be a good day to be a shaman. And, um, uh -huh. I, always remembered that whenever I have that, um, you know, something's going on in my life or, or I'm not at a certain frequency, I'm mm -hmm. not, you know, I'm, I've caught a bug or whatever that, um, other people, other people are usually easier on us than we are on ourselves and will appreciate the honesty of this is not I can't do this work today and and I really want to show up for you in full presence. Can we reschedule for whenever? Yeah. And I think that's a big piece is when we know we need to self-care and we're still giving and giving and giving, giving ourselves permission to today's not not a good day for this. Yeah. Definitely. Permission, being gentle with ourselves, being uh, being compassionate and saying, yeah, this is one of those days where I need to be by myself in my own space, drinking my tea, reading my book, sitting in the dark, whatever it is, um, you know, really comes down to awareness and owning the needs. Yeah. Yeah. So thank you. Thank you so much to, um, to all of the people who tuned in with us today. We love to hear from you. Um, please go ahead and if you're on Facebook, you can like our page, Shaman Sister Sessions, and uh, that's where we post the, um, the invites to this webinar. So you'll see it's on every Tuesday at noon, as well as uploading the link to the, the video file so you can watch later if you like. Yep. Yes. And we are, yeah, we're doing this every Tuesday at noon. So if you have a topic or something that you want to um, hear about or you're interested in discussing, uh, please send us a message to um, let us know. We're both on Facebook, through our Facebook page, or we have an email address, I'm sure. Yep. <laughs> We do. We have an email address, <laughs> shaman sister sessions at gmail.com. There you go. <laughs> yep, but you, can, you can find us uh, through a couple different means, and we look forward to hearing from you. Thank you so much for joining us. Thank you. Bye.